This jacket sells for $100 or more on eBay. Stay tuned to find out why. Hi everyone, Cherry Vintage, CherryVintage.com here. Thanks for stopping by to see my vintage clothing haul for the first week of February 2013. And what I'd like to start off here with is vintage 80s novelty sweaters. You might want to check the completeds because these get good money. So you would search 80s vintage novelty sweater and these are pullover. Pullover is often a good keyword term too. But just try 80s vintage novelty sweater and see what's sold and you'll see that the prices can go about $35 up to kind of crazy money of like 150 or so and often that has to do with either a couple things. It could be due to how cool the print is and also if you have a cute uh, model that looks like she stepped out of Vogue. That often helps too. Alright, let's check out the tag there. That uh, says Sport Tees and those are, I believe it's late 70s, but go, whoops, it's all the way through the 80s. Um, anytime you find vintage clothing that is size large to extra large, that always does better because vintage clothing tends to write, run smaller in size than contemporary. Heart or hearts might be a good keyword to use too. I would forgot to say, with all my clothing this week, the sweaters I paid a dollar for, the jeans I paid two dollars and fifty cents, and the jacket I paid twelve dollars and fifty cents. And hopefully, I'll remember to tell you. What I'm going to list these for. Okay, so there's one 80s novelty sweater. Let's check out this one. Also, too, you know, use blue, purple if you can fit it in the title. Again, 80s vintage novelty sweater. It's a pullover, long sleeve. Um, brand here you might want to check out is Adele or Adelaide. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. That was a very trendy label. You know, popular with high school girls, college girls in the 80s. I believe they're out of business now. So if you see that tag, you're going to find one of these kind of funky novelty prints, likely. Um, I would use on this one pink as my um, as a keyword, too. Pullover, maybe long sleeve if you can fit it in. But definitely get in 80s vintage novelty sweater. Here we have another one. Uh, let's check out the brand name there. Rose. Okay. has... Uh, light shoulder pads. Sometimes they're huge shoulder pads. Another thing to note is a good keyword. You see, I hope it picks up and reflect is metallic. It has metallic threads. Another keyword that is popular. I think this trend is trending down in popularity, but it, often it trends up and it trends down over the last 10 years. And this is a generic, uh, supposed to be like a um, American, Native American print. Obviously it's really not, but in the fashion world they call this Navajo or Southwestern. So check out uh, 80's Southwestern vintage sweater in the completes and the solds and you'll see they go for really good money. Again $35 up into crazy money of like 150 and more. On these sweaters I would, I always put usually somewhere in the low 40s, low mid 40s, best offer and I set it to automatically take $35 but I never sell them for less than $35 because even if they have to sit six months in my store they are going to sell for $35. Over here we have uh, Jason Maxwell and again I would put in the 80's vintage sweater. I would not use novelty because there's no uh, kind of quirky print. Uh, novelty print, in case I forgot to say, is like a kind of a quirky, kit kitschy print. It could be hearts, dogs, ponies, ladies, poodles, anything like that. Okay, what I would use on this one, obviously, for keywords, black, blue, and also, again, if I could pick that up, metallic. Here's something I'd like to show you. Great keyword. Dolman sleeve. When you see that the armpit Usually, I hope I can point this out, is usually up higher on a sweater. But on a lady's sweater, this was a 70s, 80s trend. Um, it's also earlier in vintage history, but it's not really relevant right now. But definitely 80s and 70s have these dolman sleeves. And a keyword that girls often use on uh, eBay is bat wing. You know, like the animal, bat wing. Yeah, so we want to check that out. Try uh, vintage bat wing sweater and see what that brings up. That often increases the value there. So on this one, uh, it has a little condition issues. It's getting a little pilly, so it's only very good condition. If it was in great condition, I would put more like, oh, 55, 60, and take 45. 
But I think I'm going to go in the mid to low 40s and take 35 on this one. Here's another label. Let's check this out. That's Ashley Hill. And this sweater is a cardigan. Any kind of sweater where you have to step into it like a coat and uh, button it down like that, that is a cardigan. It's a good keyword term because some girls only want to wear um, cardigans. Uh, the print here is a tiger print print, you know, a pseudo tiger print. I'm not sure that tiger print is a good keyword, but animal print may be a very good keyword. Again, metallic threads, so metallic you could use. Um, on this one, um, also rockabilly. This is like 80s does 50s, and the rockabilly gals, they love these kind of animal prints, so I think I would put on mine maybe in the mid-50s, take 45 on that. Might do free ship on it too, because it's lightweight. Here we have uh, Vest by Tina Hagen, and that is mid 80s into the 90s, but I, I don't know, I'm going to list this either 80s, 90s, it's hard to, to me it has more of a 90s flavor, okay? So, zipper down like that, and if you ever find Tina Hagen, this, I don't think is a real lady, I think it's just a brand name, um, these labels, I don't use them as a keyword, because unless it's a designer or a highly desirable label, there's really no point in using it as a keyword, because people are not really searching for that. But they are searching for uh, animal print. I forgot if this is leopard or cheetah, so I need to figure that out and do a tutorial on it because I always get confused. But some gals prefer cheetah, some gals prefer leopard, so it is a good keyword to know. Also rocker, biker, punk. Um, so, and this is faux, faux leather, it's not real. It's lined, it's a really great condition. So I would think I would put on this uh, somewhere in the 50s and take 45 shipped. Okay, this is a 70s sweater over again and what I wanted to show you about this one that's interesting oops darn it my hand doesn't really show when you have a knit like this with the holes in it that's called pointel and you should look that up to make sure that it's spelled correctly it's kind of a tricky word to use but um some gals you know they prefer that and it's a, again a keyword that kind of comes in and goes out of uh, high desirability in the fashion vintage fashion seen. Um, this one doesn't have a tag on it. I would say this is with a little tie there. That's kind of cute. Um, late 70s into the early 80s and I would put probably, since it doesn't have a whole lot going on, I think I would put this as 42 take 35. Alright, up here we have another 80s sweater. Sorry this camera is really not picking things up all that good. I'll just read you label. It says Don, Don again. And um, this is an 80s sweater as I said. It, check out the sleeves here. This is when you see this, it's called puff sleeve, and that really can be a desirable. Again, it kind of trends in and out in the vintage uh, scene on eBay. But puff, P-U-F-F, -F, and sleeve can be abbreviated S-L-V. That saves you some keyword space, and the um, it, it still comes up as sleeve in the search results. Again, you look down here, and you have pointel right down the center, and you see that the part looks like a rope. That's called cable or cable knit. So this is a vintage. If you found one like this, you'd list it as, or I would suggest you to list it as, 80s vintage puff sleeve sweater. If you put in point tell and cable or cable knit, I put that in. Knit is always good in um, just to use the word knit when you have a sweater. Um, and then also what? Pull over. All right. Moving on to the next. This is a 70s and doesn't have a brand name, but we know it's 70s by looking at this label here, made in Korea. Now to me, this is what I call high on the cute factor, because you're using robin egg blue uh, yarn here, you have the point tail, and you have roses. So I, anything that's high on the, what I call the cute meter, or high on the sexy meter, they're two different meters, but you can get more money for them. Um, so I would date this as the early 70s. And um, I definitely use the keyword rose because that's a great keyword pullover. And I think I would just put it in at 65 and take maybe 55 on that. And just let it sit till it sells because I know it well. All right, here's another um, sweater. This one is from the uh, oops, early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. You can tell that one it says British Crown uh, of. British Crown Colony of Hong Kong. Whenever you see that on the label, let me see if I can pull this down here and you see that too. Okay, you might want to do your own research on that because it'll take me forever to tell you about that, but 
Put that in Wikipedia and see British Crown Colony that helps you to date things and when that ended of Hong Kong. This is a, um, like I said, late 60s, early 70s. I figure that by looking at the kind of the flower power motif we got going on here. Ski sweater. What makes it a ski sweater is that it's heavy, it's wool, zipper up the back. Oh, put it this way. Um, definitely use wool as a keyword. Uh, maybe flower power, also cable. And wool is great wool. So I would and I would put that at um, 70 or no, 60, about 65. And take somewhere in the 50. Okay. Here's another sweater that's kind of interesting, worth taking note. It has a zipper in the back. I wouldn't really call this a um, a ski sweater. I would call this a uh, rockabilly pinup sweater. I date this as the early 60s, even though there's no label on there, because it's short waisted. Okay, so let's compare that to this one. See how longer this is, but they're close in size, so like they're both sort of a medium vintage. And the reason why it stops here is because gals would wear it often like with a pencil skirt, and it's really fat, really form-fitting and flattering. So, and also based on the colorway, that's what I would date this as the early 60s. So on this one, I think I would start this at 65 and take no less than 45. All right, let's check out this label. This label says Love Bug. It's no longer in existence. It was a 70s label for kind of the teen and early 20s kind of gal. Um, again, you have the Na Navajo or Southwestern print, and it's a cardigan. There's no buttons here, so don't let that phase you because some cardigans do not have buttons. And the reason you can tell is there's no buttonholes over here. All right, so since this is real vintage Navajo print, I would put it, the Navajo print isn't real, but the 70s is real. So I would put this at about, um, oh, in the 60s and take maybe low 50s, high 40s. All right, here's a great one. Uh, stripes are going to be really hot this spring as a trend. And so this is working the stripes and also the ethnic print. Uh, you could actually probably put in Na Navajo or Southwestern because you have this going on here. A great keyword for when you find a sweater like this that is lightweight and tapered is skinny fit. Many gals love the skinny fit because, you know, then you don't look chubby. A little tie down here, a little blue sound tie. The name here is Chris Ann, and that could be found for 70s into the 80s. So, since this is really desirable, I think I would go ahead and put maybe start out kind of high 70s and then take as low as the 50s on that. But these are ha getting harder and harder to find. All right, here's a great find. Check out the label here. Stefano, I don't think I could take it out. I'll show you in a second without making it fall down. But these are 80s acid, acid wash jeans. Um, check out 80s acid, acid wash jeans or even the jean jackets and they are going really well, especially if they have the men's with a Sherpa, which is sort of like a wool collar. Uh, sometimes they're, they trend up and they trend down, meaning in, in uh, desirability. But what's really cool about these and why I can list these for crazy money is because I have never seen them. I've seen them before with studs. They have studs here, but I have never seen them with chains. And this is a cutout. When you ever have something cut out, cut away, Use that cut out as a keyword. Go check it out and you'll see what I mean when you put anything like 80s cut out or 90s cut out, anything sweater, dress. It's a hot, it's a hot uh, keyword and it brings in more money. So I'd also use like biker on this. So I'm putting these and I'll tell you, you if you don't ship international and you want to sell things like this, you really should try to ship international because most of my 80s well, I wouldn't say most, but I would say at least a quarter of my 80s things seem to be going to Europe and to um, Australia so and Queensland. So you, you really want to uh, consider doing that because they do pay a crazy amount of money for 80s clothes. They love the big hair bands and they love their 80s clothes. So uh, this brand here, oh, I, was gonna, I would list these at... Uh, like 150 why not 150 I wouldn't take less than uh, 100 bucks on these. I don't care if they have to sit all year, but I know that they won't. Um, take a look at the label now that I can pull it down. Stefano. Again, that's not really a good keyword to use, Stefano. But anytime you find Stefano, you likely have a pair of hot 80s jeans. 
Okay, last thing. This is a great find. I can get it to stop moving around. This is an 80s leather uh, biker jacket. Check out the completed for 80s vintage leather jacket. And even put in biker. And you will see that they go for $75 even on the low end up to like $300. Again, if you have a cool model, you know, they tend to go higher, but even the ones on the mannequins are going for $100, $150. And here's part of the desirability factor here, is that it has a tapered fit right there. So a, key, cool, a good keyword is fitted, because women always like to look skinny. Uh, it has the big chunky detail zippers here. It has a real belt going around there. And then course a nice big chunky zipper there. Now usually the black ones go for more but I've never had a hard time selling the uh, blue ones and it's large which is always good. So I forgot if earlier in this I've already stated what I put on it but I'm going to start at 175 and I would never take less than a hundred dollars on this. Thank you for stopping by and if you found this to be uh, valuable information or <laughs> even slightly entertaining, would you please help me out by commenting, liking, and subscribing. Thanks.